Hi everyone, this is Coach Diana, and I'm going to talk to you today about um, kind of navigating the process of competing in college. Um, there was some questions in the Perform Happy uh, community about this, and Rebecca asked me to address it. So I'm going to read you one of the questions. Um, Last year, my daughter expressed an interest in competing in college, and the coach had her on track for D2 or D3 potential. Now that my daughter has gotten through the scary stuff, college is on her mind again. I'd like to, I'd like her, I'd like to let her know that if that's what she wants, we, her coach, herself, and I need to talk about a plan. I'd like to do this in a way that doesn't stress her so much that she has mental blocks again. Or do I not talk about it at all and let her figure it out? That's what I do most of the time, but I feel like she may need some guidance um, on this right now because it seems like such a long way off. And then there was another um, mother who also kind of chimed in wanting some advice as well. Um, her daughter is a level nine and just has no idea how to even start. So I'm gonna give you some advice from my own experience and, and kind of what I know. Um, so I would say both of these girls um, who the moms were asking about are 12. And so I would say right now, I wouldn't actually have the conversation with her, especially knowing that she's just kind of gotten through some mental blocks. Um, let her enjoy gymnastics for a little bit but I would still do things to kind of promote college gymnastics, so it's still kind of fresh on our mind. Um, if you have uh, any college programs in the area uh, where you could go and watch some college meets, I would definitely do that because it's such a different experience and it, they're so fun. And so if you can take your daughter to watch college meets, I would definitely do that right now. But I wouldn't really um, approach it like, we need to sit down and have a plan right now because that that might scare her a little bit. Um, it might also just kind of put this this like black cloud over it, like there's some pressure um, on gymnastics because I've got to get ready, I've got to have a plan. So I would say for the moment and for the next really couple of years, I wouldn't really say much about her um, plan for getting to college. Although I would support it and anytime she brings it up, I would still ha I would have the conversation and and kind of let her navigate that conversation right now. Once she gets into high school, kind of depends on if, if ninth grade is high school or not, but I would say ninth or tenth grade, then you can start thinking about it a little bit more. Um, and then maybe uh, you do have a conversation with her. At that point, I would really talk to the coach because the coach is gonna know a lot more about um, kind of where she's at at that point, that's a, a couple years off, and kind of where they they think she's, she's going in the next couple of years. Um, for gymnastics in particular, certainly I know this mom mentioned Division II, Division III potentials. Um, there might be other parents out there who, you know, they think their daughters might wanna go to Division I. I will say this, for the, um, the top Division I programs who have a lot of scholarships to give, um, you probably, if your daughter is one of those top athletes, um, probably a top level 10 athlete, she's probably going to get recruited by the schools. So she, she might not have to do too much. I was just judging our level 8, 9, 10 state meet this past weekend, and then in the level 10 session, I looked up in the stands, and there were three or four Bay Area college coaches um, in the stands, and they were there for recruiting purposes. And they might also have been there for any senior who might be coming to their program, even juniors if they've done early signing. Um, and, and you're right, there is certainly a time frame where coaches cannot talk to girls before a certain time. So you have to be cognizant of that. And you know, that's an NCAA rule. And if your coach or your daughter's coach has had any experience with um, trying to get kids to college, they should know a little bit about it. If your daughter is the first one navigating through this, um, then you know the coach might not have all the answers, but they certainly can 
can uh, do some research through NCAA and, and find out. Um, I, I'm pretty sure they can't talk to girls before they're a junior, but I'm not positive on that. So I would say for the time being, let your daughter navigate the conversation. Once she gets into high school, then you can you can kind of broach it again and, and just see how she's doing at that point and see where she's at and if she still is wanting to do college gymnastics. Um, if the girl is a top level 10, colleges are gonna be recruiting her. If, however, she's not a top level 10, that doesn't mean she can't go to, to college. It also doesn't mean she won't go to a division one school. But for the division one schools that are maybe not the, the top notch uh, big schools and even division two schools, they all have scholarships to give away. And so certainly you want to make sure that they know who your daughter is. Um, you know, especially college coaches will go to big meets. So you know, they were at our state championships, they'll be at regionals, they'll be at nationals, easterns, westerns, all of those meets, you will see college coaches there. However, that doesn't mean that, that kids don't get, you know, missed. Um, so I think then it is up to the, the gymnast and the parents and the coaches to do um, a good job of trying to promote themselves to different colleges. So, you know, making sure that you make contact with, with schools that you're interested in, um, certainly sending video uh, of practice, of competition. There might be some skills that you don't do in competition, but you're working on video those skills as well. Um, and, you know, when, when do you do that? Certainly, I would say, you know, in your junior year, you should be videotaping and sending video. You might have some video from your sophomore year, like if you went to a state meet or regionals, Easterns, Westerns, Nationals, any of those competitions, have those videoed so that you can send them along. Um, and then, you know, you do kind of have to advocate for yourself some because you don't, you don't want to leave everything up to the coaches finding you because they, they might miss you, especially if you're looking at a school that's kind of across the country and they may just not have a lot of local meets where they're gonna see you or easily know who you are, get have um, any kind of recognition happening. Um, so I would say working with your coach and trying to get some video and, and doing your due diligence as a parent and as an, a gymnast and with the help of your coaches too, of trying to um, research some schools that you might be interested in. And certainly division two schools have scholarships, division one schools have scholarships, division three schools do not have scholarships. So it's probably not as, um, you, you probably don't need to be in as big of a hurry because everybody is just kind of walking on. Um, and if scholarships aren't your main goal, which is, Fabulous because you know in any gymnastics team. I went to a division one school and we had um, 16 girls on the team and at the time division one Was allowed to have eight full ride scholarships. My school didn't have that many. We only had five and a half I believe um, So every school is a little bit different with how many scholarships they have and certainly the bigger schools the SEC schools and Big Ten Big 12 all of those are gonna have the full amount of scholarships But then they also have more people that that walk on and You know keep in mind too that with college there is certainly some specialization so like on my team every year we had a, about 16 girls on the team six people compete per event and I would say we had no more than three girls that were competing all around um, at, at any meet so you know either three or four girls in the lineup were maybe doing one event two or three events so even if your daughter has you know one or two or maybe three really strong events and then some events that maybe aren't quite as strong um, she still has lots of potential to go to college and compete because you get to do, you know, you can, you can specialize and lots of people will do maybe compete two events or one event or something. So 
certainly keep that in mind. And if there is an event that you're really, really strong at, and, and that's really going to be kind of your, your ticket um, into college gymnastics, uh, then I would say trying to research some, some programs to see kind of um, where their strengths are and, and who, like if, if BEAM is your event, then you might not want to look at um, schools and see who's competing on BEAM and are they seniors or are they sophomores? You know, because if they have three seniors that are constantly in their BEAM lineup and you know they're gonna be graduating off, I can promise you that coach is gonna be looking for um, BEAM specialists to come on because they're gonna to need to fill um, that, that lineup. Uh, with strong um, gymnasts. So that is certainly part of it. Um, let's see, I find to be more on the parent than the coach for the sport of gymnastics unless the gymnast is part of a major gym. How would that be managed better? Uh, you know, I think that it really kind of depends. I, I think that some coaches are very involved in um, the recruiting process for their their girls, but I do think those are the coaches that have kind of been through it at several times. I know when I was going through it, it was kind of all on me, and I was the first one in my gym to kind of go to college. I fortunately had an older sister, so she had gone through it um, in a different gym, different state, everything. Um, so we had a little bit, my parents had a little bit of knowledge of kind of what to do, but um, I think the the coach can be an advocate. Certainly, um, sometimes college coaches will contact your your coach, especially if they're trying to get in, in contact with the athlete. Um, but the other thing that coaches can do is make sure that you go to big meets where you might be seen. So big invitationals, um, which that's where you know letting the coach know that you are interested in going to college and maybe some schools that you might be interested in because then maybe you you choose your gym chooses to go to a big invitational that's in that area specifically for purposes of who knows in big invitationals you might have coaches come for recruiting purposes so um, but I do think in terms of a lot of the um, research and getting everything together, it does fall a lot on the gymnast and the, the parents to do. That is correct. Um, so <clears throat> I would say that, um, you know, that that's kind of my, those are my recommendations in terms of when to start the process. I wouldn't really start um, mom or dad leading the conversation until you're at least, until the child's at least in, in high school. And then, you know, kind of feel out where they're at. And if they're still interested in doing college gymnastics prior to that you know try to see as many college um, gymnasts as you can um, go to if, if if there's if there are, are college programs within the area or close by we're getting towards the end of the season and so next weekend are the championship meets for everybody across the country and then after that, it's regionals and um, nationals. So we're getting down to the end of the season this year, but certainly if there are some, um, like I know SEC championships are in St. Louis. Um, the conference out here is held in Colorado this year. So you can look up some schools and on their schedule, you'll see wherever their, their conference championship is being held and that's next weekend. And then everything else takes place in April. So um, there might be something close by, but certainly there's always next year too. And you know, our college season starts in January. Um, so if, if you can facilitate trying to go, the other thing is, you know, at college meets, a lot of times the girls um, kind of hang out afterwards for a little bit. And so you, your daughter can go talk to some of the college athletes. Uh, college athletes often give um, autographs and, and they might have some advice in terms of you know what to do to try to get um, onto a team. Obviously, ha you know when when the coaches see you, just having some visibility with the coaches, even though you're not talking about coming yet because it's way too early, um, it still kind of plants a seed, and then they might kind of watch over time um, to see kind of how your daughter progresses and whatever. So there's certainly little things that you can do, but I wouldn't make it a big deal. Uh, certainly for a couple more years. 
once they're in high school, then you can kind of start the process. And I would say in the end of their sophomore year, beginning of their junior year is when you really should start um, getting videos because uh, sophomore year for the competition season because really towards the beginning of their junior year you want to start sending those videos out then that allows them to use the competition season of their junior year to really look at them and kind of see and and you can always send updates after their junior year especially if they have a really good meet or a good you know state meet regionals one of the later meets westerns easterns nationals um, and then by their senior year, they're probably in contact with you. And even if they're not, then that just means all the more that you need to take um, initiative to try to get in touch with these coaches and, and try to go visit. You can always have face-to-face -face contact always helps, especially when they might be deciding between, you know, two or three kids for walk-on spots or for the last couple of scholarships, partial scholarships or whatever. And so having face-to-face -face contact is definitely helpful. And then that might get um, get a recruiting trip um, lined up or a, a school visit lined up. So that would be my advice. Um, and in the meantime, I would say, you know, really try to have your, your child. The biggest thing is you want them to keep enjoying the sport. And, you know, part of that is, is being successful makes it more fun. But even if you have some, some bad meets, you can still have fun with the sport. Um, and if we have this extra pressure added on, we want to kind of take that away. So anyway, I'll stop rambling. Um, but those would be my tips for trying to, to kind of prepare for getting into college gymnastics. If you have any questions, please feel free, any more questions, um, feel free to leave me a note at the bottom or you can send me an email and I can try to answer them more specifically um, for each of you. All right, thanks so much, have a great day, bye.